Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, I am going to talk about what are the different project components in a DBT core project. What are the different project components whenever you create a DBT core project and what exactly they are used for. So before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn and as well as to subscribe to my channel. So let's move ahead and just to give you a little bit of background, DBT is nothing but it's a data built tool, which is an open source command line tool that helps you to do the transformation in ELT. So we already know about extract, load and transform. So this data built tool helps you to complete the transformation part, right? And of course you can do testing, you can do documentation as well so i'll not go in depth about dbt because i've already explained this in my previous video i have also given you the difference between the dbt core and dbt cloud right and i have also shown you how dbt cloud looks like in my previous video so in this particular video we are going to focus on the dbt core project itself so let's move ahead and uh, in fact before moving ahead i have created a dbt core project as well for you to show you what's the project structure exactly and what are the different components of it. So now when I talk about let's start with the dbt project right. So what you see uh, in vs code over here you can uh, on the left hand side right. So this is nothing but this is my dbt project and this is exactly how a dbt project structure looks like right. So I will start from dbt project.yaml file. What is this dbt project.yaml file over here? Right, this is one of the major component of a dbt core project. Now here, if you can understand, this is this is the main entry point. Now here exactly, uh, you know, you mentioned the details of your project, right? What is your project name? You know, what is the profile? Uh, we, as a part of the dbt project, we create multiple models, right? So we mentioned the path of the model. So you can see over here, this is nothing but the path of the model, the relative path of the model. Now, similarly, you know, the tests path, the, uh, the path where exactly you have defined, you know, tests in your profile. Now, similarly, seeds path, we are going to discuss all of these components, right? So it basically describes your project, right? What is your project about? Now, if I go back to the definition over here, you know, this is nothing but this is a dbt project. It tells you the directory of your dbt, DBT project. So the moment you create a project, dbt project file, the dbt project.yaml file knows which particular component is placed where. So it helps you in providing a very important information about your entire project. Now, similarly, you will also see something called as profiles.yaml here. And here also in the dbt project file, you can see profile answers, right? So what is this profile over here? Now this answers is something that you can see over here, right? Now, if I go to profiles.yaml file, now remember that dbt project.yaml file tells you about the project, right? But now how the execution of that, that particular project will happen that is defined by profiles.yaml file. Now, in this case, what will happen is if you see over here, right, it tells you answers, right? This is nothing but this is the profile name, which is over here, right? Now, similarly, it defines, it has the information of the database that you are connecting to and how you are connecting to that particular database. So in my case, I am using OAuth to connect to the BigQuery, right? So that is what I have mentioned over here. So what is my database? right what is my schema dbt test so these are the details that are placed in the profiles.yaml file right and even your dbt project that will also refer to your profile file as well right internally this will also go to your profiles.yaml file to understand the profile right on how you are connecting to the database which database you are actually connecting to so if i come back here to the slide Profile contains all the details required to connect to your data warehouse. So in my case, it's BigQuery, right? And we will be using BigQuery in the upcoming videos as well. Now it contains the connection details of your data platform. So how you are connecting to BigQuery, for example, right? Now, similarly, in, if it is Snowflake, then how you are connecting to Snowflake, 
right so whenever you run run dbt core from command line what happens so the moment you run a dbt project it will read your dbt project.yaml file file which i have explained to you and then it will find the profile name and then it will look into profiles.yaml file which contains all the information dbt needs to connect to your any data platform it can be snowflake it can be your big query as well now we'll go to the packages right so if you see over here i have something called as packages.yaml file now if you see over here right it it mentions something called as dbt labs dbt utils right dbt expectations right and code gen so basically what exactly it is so these are the external packages that you can utilize in your dbt project itself so if you now these dbt utils dbt expectations these are a dbt project in themselves right these are dbt projects in them, themselves which you can utilize for your particular needs for your particular project right now similarly now if you see here it is called as package.yaml file but from the later versions of dbt now it is also called as dependencies.yaml file now there is a distinguish uh, this uh, uh, you know there's a difference between dependency.yaml and the pack uh, and the package.yaml file right so package.yaml file basically was used since initial version of dbt now they have introduced dependencies.yaml file which can uh, in in dependencies.yaml file you can put package and project de dependencies both right if you have any internal project dependencies that also you can put if you have any external package itself from dbt that you want to put like i have shown you that also you can you, you can do so dependencies.yaml file you can use whenever you have to do any cross project functionalities so let's say you have two projects and you want to use a package from the second project you can actually do that using dependencies.yaml file and similarly if you have any external packages you can actually use those packages as well in the package.yaml file now uh, you have understood package.yaml file you have understood profile.yaml file you have also understood dbt project.yaml file right now also one thing that i would like to mention over here in the package.yaml file is when i actually ran this right or when you will also run your project you will actually see that these packages right they get you uh, you will see there's a folder called as dbt underscore packages right so the moment you run this right the moment you run this package.yaml file you will actually see that all your packages are loaded here so if i open let's say dbt expectations right here you will see that it also has a dbt project.yaml file so this basically this dbt expectations or dbt date or code gen right all these packages are nothing but they are a dbt projects in themselves right now let's move ahead and see exactly what we have next so the other thing is macro so now if i go back and you can actually see something called as macros here so what is this macros right so if i open here you can see that macro is weekends sql you know macro get brand name sql now basically these are nothing but these are the functions so anything that is repeatable right just like you have functions in your python similarly you have macros in dbt so if i say that are macros equivalent to functions yes they are equivalent to functions in python now similarly if you see if you have any reusable piece of code right to reduce the reusability and just to call it using you can actually use macros instead of uh, you know functions in python so anything you see in the curly brackets over here you can actually understand these are nothing but these are the macros right so macros is nothing but it is a reusable piece of logic or it is a function which are similar to you know normal functions in any of your programming languages right so they basically helps you to avoid any repeated code right and dbt uses macro so basically uh, this is a jinja temp template right which uh, you know dbt is using to create macros now the next is models right now remember that here you have something called as models as well right the moment i open these models uh, the, uh, the models uh, structure over here you can see something called as staging so i'll start from the staging and i'll explain you what exactly the staging is right so the moment 
remember that staging is the entry point to a, DB, a, D, a DBT transformations. So when I say that, the moment you create a DBT project, you for example, let's say I'm connecting to BigQuery, I connect to my BigQuery and I read the data, right? So this is the first point where my actual transformation or actual minimal transformation is going to happen. So let's say if I click here, right, stage e-commerce order items dot SQL. So here, this is nothing but it is a normal SQL query itself. If I want to do any kind of, let's say, casting, I can actually do it over here, right? So internally, you can see all of these files, right? So if you see order items dot SQL, it is going to call, uh, if you look over here, it says from source, the, the look e-commerce, which is nothing but this is an open source data set, which I got from BigQuery and order items. So what it will do is eventually if you go source e-commerce.yaml, right? Now this particular file, if you see, right, it is connecting to your BigQuery public data set, right? It is connecting to your BigQuery public data set called as the look e-commerce. And from there it is fetching up the data from there it is fetching up the data and from there you are actually creating these sql files which are nothing but your staging file with minimum minimal transformation so this is nothing but this is your staging now if i go back here right in the model structure you have staging where you pull right your data from your data sources and create data model from the data set so basically i'm reading a public data set from BigQuery and I'm creating the data models. Now data models are nothing but the SQL files in dbt right now naming convention is usually this is what is available on the dbt documentations right stage underscore source name underscore model name right so usually in the staging model there is a single source right now each file I'll actually have a single source from which I'm picking up the data. So you can do a basic operations here like renaming of column, casting values and deduplication of rows. Now if I go back, I have something called as intermediate as well inside this model. Now the moment I click on this intermediate file, you will actually see that I'm doing some kind of joins over here and I'm using some reference, right? Now you can say that the staging is the first step. After that, the step is intermediate, right? Now intermediate is nothing but it is taking in your staging uh, models, right? These sequels are nothing but these are models. So it is referencing these models. It is referencing these models. So you can see over here, REF, stage e-commerce products, right? So your e-commerce products are coming from your staging over here right so it basically refers to your staging files and it staging models and then we can actually perform joins over here and create intermediate models over here now these are not the product these are not like uh, you know the the ready models right these are intermediate models where we are actually performing the joins right now again if i go back intermediate here we are basically combining the staging tables, right? The output is not yet ready for your dashboards. You can do joins, you can do some kind of complicated, you know, calculations as well over here. And then the last one comes is the marts over here, right? Now the first was staging, the second was intermediate and then is marts over here. Now what is this marts? So dim orders dot SQL. Now here also you're writing some kind of SQL statement. Now, in this SQL statement, what exactly is happening, right? It is referencing what? It is referencing your intermediate uh, models, right? So first was staging, then intermediate, and now marts. Marts are referring to your intermediate um, models, right? And then finally, it is creating, a, you know, dashboard ready output, which is called your model as well. So this is what your models are about in a DBT project, right? So uh, uh, marts are nothing but it is same like your data marts which are ready to be used. So now the next is seeds, right? So you would have seen on the left hand side there's something called as seeds, right? Now I'll show you seeds over here. Now seeds are nothing but these are the CSV files which you can actually put in here and then you can actually read those csv files over here so those are nothing but those are called as seeds so seeds are like pretty simple over here right 
the CSV files which you, you can load into data warehouse and any data which is not changing frequently right so that is that you can use for the reference that is called as C so mainly you can call it as a lookup a static lookup table right in form of a CSV file now the next thing is snapshots right now if you see over here there is something called as snapshots now what is the snapshots now snapshots are nothing but if you have a table where you would like to maintain the SCD type 2 where you would like to maintain the history of changes in SCD type 2 that is where your snapshots come into picture your snapshot helps you to retain the history you can define the key right and then you can actually make sure that this particular table is retaining the history so this is nothing but your SAD type 2 which is maintained using the snapshot now let's move ahead and see what we have we have test round now I also told you that dbt do transform in e l t right now this t is nothing but a uh, transformation now in, uh, apart from transformation dbt also helps you in testing and documentation right so there are two types of tests you can perform generic test and custom test right generic tests are basically which you can uh, wrap which you can wrap in a sql file and can be used in uh, you know multiple uh, uh, you know models which which can be used for the multiple models as a template and custom uh, tests you basically write specifically for a particular model now these tests on the left hand side if you see over here right test now if i click over here so you can see these are mostly the generic tests so basically if you see anything in this curly brackets mostly it becomes generic so these are the generic tests that you can actually put in and the moment you run these tests right it will actually tell you whether your model has actually passed a particular test or not right you can also specify you know a uh, few tests in your model as well but those are generic very very basic uh, you know tests which you can actually define null not null you can define that but if you want to write a little complicated test case you actually need you know test module over here right so this is uh, you know uh, about your whole dvd project structure right and one more thing i would like to explain you over here is there's something called as dbt packages which i explained you right that this dbt packages comes from your package.yaml file when you run this particular file your dbt packages gets installed right now uh, it, over here right but now if you see over here this is not uh, highlighted right it's it's grayed out right similarly now why it is grayed out because we do not want to version control these packages right that is one of the reason these are grayed out and these are not um, you know version control and similarly the target right so if you if you actually see target over here target is also grayed out we are not version controlling the target and what does this target do so whenever you create a model right it gets compiled right so that compiled file is actually present in the target so you don't have no, you don't have much to do anything over here so these are this keeps on changing with every run that you do so this is what your target is about and similarly uh, you know requirement.txt you know just for your installation paths and yes so this is pretty much about your dbt project and the moment you run this particular project right what you are eventually doing you are actually running a model over here right you are running a model and the moment you run a model it basically goes and it creates the table in your bigquery it goes and it creates the table in the bigquery so i hope you liked this particular video we will take up the further sessions in the next video and do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel